It's a beautiful Thursday evening and it's Christmas Day. Good evening and welcome to the Christmas edition of Joy News at 8. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. Ahead of the bulletin, um, okay, we can also be available on uh, ABN channel. Two five three, and ahead of this bulletin, Christians across the capital join their colleagues around the world to mark Christmas. Police in the eastern region dismiss reports Nigerian Islamist militant group Boko Haram has formed a group in one of the communities in the region. And traders in Accra's central business district disappointed at lack of patronage of their wares in spite of discount offers available. Welcome back now. Now, very first story reports reaching joinees indicate one person has been injured in a shooting incident in Alavano in the Volta region. Residents of the town have for a long time been embroiled in a conflict with their neighbors in Nkonya. A recent outbreak of shooting in Alavano prompted the Interior Ministry to reinstate a curfew on the two towns. Regional Police Commander Peter King Jeno confirmed to join news a while ago that the injured person has been rushed to hospital. A team has also been dispatched to the area. We'll give you more updates as and when they get in. So scores of Christians across the capital on Thursday joined Christians around the world to commemorate Christmas, the day Jesus Christ was said to have been born. The day was marked with church services which started from as early as 6 a.m. Just as Folsom visited some churches in the capital to see how they ushered in the Christmas. ...to capacity and the congregation prayed and gave thanks to God for his protection and guidance throughout the year. The presiding bishop of the Reverend J.E. Aluti Papo Methodist Church, very Reverend Isaac Akushi, in an interview asked Christians to reflect on their lives during the period and allow God to change their character and attitude to enable them to become Christ-like. Well, I just want to tell Ghanaian, Ghanaians that all is not lost. With Christ, we can have breakthroughs in whatever we are doing. It is true that things are hard. But when we have Christ, we can withstand the tests of the time. But if we don't have Christ, then we want to go our own way. With Christ in the vessel, we can certainly smile. At in spite of the economic difficulties encountered this year, some congregants joining his spoke to were optimistic of a better 2015. It, it, it could be a better one. We should have hope, as we say in the West. Says. If you mean the, with Christ, you can smile at the, uh, in the vessel. So uh, as you have seen us through 2014 and you're entering 15, I know and I believe you will do it. I'm hoping so that 2015 will become better than this year. And the only thing that we as a nation can enjoy is to have Christ because he happens to be everything. The Bible says that through him, everything was made. So I believe that Ghanaians, our economy will do well if we come to accept Jesus as our Savior. At the Covenant Temple of the International Central Gospel Church, Joy News saw some church members busily bargain an array of food products. Resident pastor of the church, Reverend Samuel Gatti, said the package will be given to the leading society. Because Jesus Christ said, I came to give you life and life, you know, in abundance. So love is love and love in abundance. It's not love that is limited, you know, to a small group of people and that is finished. And love is picking something in return. This is love and love in abundance. So we are going to people we don't even know, people we have not even met before, people we have never seen. We want to go to them and then help them and give them. So we're still in the Christmas mode, but call it exquisite, chic, or trendy. You can trust Ghanaian ladies to look their best, especially during the Christmas and New Year season. So what hairstyle are our women rocking this season? Well, Joy News Adelaide Arthur has been visiting some hair saloons in the capital to find out what styles are in vogue. 
It's a matter of looking good for the season. And that's why most ladies are ready to spend a fortune on their hair. Whether weaves, hair extension or braids, ladies choose a style that complements their looks. At the World Braid Center in Kokumlimli, a sizable queue did not appear to be a deterrent to the ladies, so long as they get to walk away with their desired hairdos. With the twists, I look good. And um, previously I've had um, weave on. And so I just to have a twist this Xmas season. That's why I have a twist on. Manager of the center tells me they've had a lot of ladies trooping in over the past few weeks to get different styles of braids fixed for them ahead of the Christmas and New Year seasons. Mostly they do the twist braids and then the 3-3, three three, which is the uh, braiding in threes. And then the cornrow. This year the cornrow is, I mean, raining, I should say, and the twist. What type are you doing now? I'm doing cornrow rasta. Single braids at the back and then the cornrow in the front. The candy saloon has also done more braids for customers than other kinds of hairdo during the past two weeks. Hair stylist Anita Ephraim believes the high demand is because braids last longer when kept well. For the past two weeks, um, some comes for braiding big sizes and then her small sizes. <laughs> Whatever style that you've chosen to do, why do you prefer the style? I prefer the longer ones because it's 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 now trending. Mm -hmm. Let me let me say, mm -hmm. <laughs> the longer braids are now trending and it keeps long, so I want that one. This is a festive season, so I had to at least look different from normal days. Weave and hair extensions are also in vogue this season and the choices vary from one lady to the other. Our clients prefer the long hair than the short hair and they normally use the waves than the straight ones. Okay, I've been braiding, even though my hair is natural, but I need to change so that you like change your hair or something like that. So I prepared this one and then it looked good on me. For the stylist, braids appear to be the preferred hairdo for the season. The ladies who wear braids find them easy to manage, economical, and most importantly, they feel braids make them look beautiful, smarter, and confident. Maybe I should also go get some braids on, but we're still celebrating Christmas. Uh, the nation's capital, Accra, was characteristically quiet on Christmas Day with a lesser number of vehicles moving around the town. Derek Echo Sam reports the small number of vehicles on the road also meant less traffic. On a day like this, a visit to the central business district should not be an easy task as one expects to find the area inundated with vehicles. Well, this year's Christmas Day was totally different. A visit by the news team to the business district saw cars freely moving about as the streets in one of the busiest places in the country seemed deserted. This also meant commercial vehicles had a hard time getting passengers to patronize their services. So what could have accounted for this? Could it be that the euphoria surrounding Christmas is dying down? Or is it the case that people decided to desert the streets of Accra for personal reasons? Maybe Ghanaians have resorted to spending quality time with families at home during Christmas. Eric Akosam, join you, Accra. And the Eastern Regional Police Command has described as false a front page story by the Heritage newspaper on Tuesday, December 23, 2014, with the headline Boko Haram formed in Ghana. At a media briefing, the Deputy Eastern Regional Police Commander, OCP James Azuma Abbas, said the group being referred to as a volunteer watchdog group formed by some members of the Akim Afuase Zongo to assist the police fight crime. Now, Haruna Yusuf Wumpeni has more of the story. The media briefing was to enable the Eastern Regional Police Command to react to the story carried by the Heritage newspaper claiming a local wing of the Nigerian Islamist group Boko Haram had been formed in the region. Boko Haram, which is on the quest to establish an Islamic caliphate, 
in Nigeria has over the years caused massive destruction, raiding villages, and has also kidnapped over 200 schoolgirls from a government secondary school in Chibok. But ACP James Azuma Abbas Abba says the group in question is a neighborhood watchdog committee which will assist the police fight crime. The public relations officer for the regional police command, ASP Yao Kitiayabwa, meanwhile, says the police is on the hunt for a 45 year old headsman, Mohammed Mustafa Sabute, who stole 21 cattle. The regional police command has mounted a search for the arrest of a 45-year-old man named Mohammed Mustafa Sabite Elias Chupa, a head, a headsman, a headsman who is wanted by the police. He was a resident of Lowano, a suburb of Bono. The Dumasi Circuit Court has issued a warrant for his arrest on the 19th of November 2014. Haruna Isiv from Penis reports from the Eastern Region. So if you just joined us, you're watching Joy News at 8. We'll be back shortly with more. Welcome back to Joy News at 8. Now to the rest of our stories. And Ghana needs you strong and healthy. This is a message coming from the Minister for Health. He says that Ghana needs you strong and healthy for the year 2015. The year 2015 looks promising and brighter, but it is only when one has optimal health that you can create wealth for a healthier and happy year. The Ministry of Health wishes to use this opportunity to advise all Ghanaians, especially the youth to stay healthy and safe during this Christmas festivities so as to help achieve the healthy population for national development promised by the government. The ministry is therefore recommending the following health tips to ensure a successful Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. And it says that you are what you eat and drink, so it is important to watch what you eat this Christmas season to stay healthier during and after the season, try to eat safe and fresh foods. Use safe food keeping practices. Um, for example, freezing and heating all leftover food before eating. Drink at least eight glasses or six to eight sachets of water each day. It will flush toxins and waste from your body and thin your blood for effective circulation. Try to have early dinner to prevent pot belly, obesity, and related diseases. You may consider vegetable soup or fruits for your dinner for easy digestion. Quite, quit smoking and drink responsibly. Exercise regularly at least 30 minutes three times a week. Ensure clean environment and do not litter around to avoid diseases. Have enough rest to control stress early to bed early to rise. Sleeping early will help you rest and build your cells and tissues for a regenerative morning. Remember to wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water before eating and after visiting the lavatory. Avoid direct contact with body fluids of a person suffering from Ebola by using protective materials like gloves, goggles and masks and disinfect the beddings and clothing of an infected person with disinfectant. Now, persons suspected to be suffering from Ebola should be taken to the nearest health unit immediately, and people who have died from Ebola should be promptly and safely buried under strict supervision. And then the Ministry of Health continues to say that this message uh, is brought to you by the kind courtesy of the Minister of Health, Dr. Kweku Ajman Mensa. And so away from health, the paramount chief of Esikado traditional area, Nana Kwabinen Ketia, has blamed the collapse of the railway industry on people whom he accuses of pursuing their own selfish interest. He said, anyone who thinks the railway industry is irrelevant should rethink. Nana Ketia expressed these sentiments at the first anniversary of the Women's Committee of the Railway Workers Union and the 33rd anniversary of the Railway Ladies Association in Takrade, Western, in Takrade. Our Western Regional Correspondent William Benjamin Peters has more. The program was under the theme, The Railway Still Relevant to Economic Growth, 
why the benign neglect. Most speakers, including the General Secretary of the Railway Workers Union, Godwell Ntama, deliberated on the relevance of the railway sector and its contribution to all sectors of the economy. He said the railway sector in Ghana is arguably at its worst times due to neglect and lack of investment. Paramount Chief of Isikado Traditional Area, Nana Kobnan Ketia said the lack of management audit has shouldered criminals whose activities have impacted negatively on the railway sector. He says the nation has lost its direction due to the collapse of the railway sector and called on authorities to consider working towards the restructuring and revamping of the sector. In terms of artisans, nothing, nobody could, could, could be compared to what was produced from the railways. So we said, let's go back and see if we can create a technical university with the railways. Using location as the base. Go to location and see. Go and look which machines are there. And ask yourself, what happened? Who were the criminals responsible for this? I'm not afraid of saying these things. Where are the machines? The foundry? The, 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 the what's the name of it? The, the, the electrical things and so on. And then the graded things to become a master. And it was for five years. He went to an apprentice for five years. Mubwana. Yeah. My father was a railway man. And I lived in a railway town. Managing director of the Ghana Railway Authority, Ben Amofa, pledged the authority's readiness to support government's efforts towards revamping the railway sector. Four ladies who expressed interest in becoming the first ever female locomotive drivers were introduced. William Benjamin Peters report from the Western Region. So let's turn our attention to Teshi, where the first desalination plant in sub-Saharan Africa is due to be inaugurated soon in Accra by February 2015. President John Dramani Mahama has hinted that construction of the $125 million project is already complete awaiting inauguration. Situated at Nungwa, a suburb of Accra, the plant will pump 13.2 million gallons of fresh water daily derived from treated seawater to about 500,000 people in Teshi and Nungwa. Suji's Corporation, Japan's largest importer of rare earth metals, partnered a leading Spanish freshwater firm, Abengua Water, to establish the project. The investors have entered into a 25-year build, own, operate and transfer contract with the Ghana Water Company Limited to sell the water to the Ghanaian operator for distribution to, con to customers. During the inauguration of the expanded corn water supply in the eastern region, President Mahama said the desalination project fell in line with government's move to make seawater safer for drinking. Ghana becomes one of the few countries in Africa to operate such a facility. Algeria operates Africa's biggest desalinated plant, the Magta plant. We'll be back shortly with some business. Business news. From that break and now to some business. Now, bulk oil importers are optimistic that domestic fuel prices might reduce next year. Now, the importers say predictions of a further fall in oil prices on the world market will likely lead to a reduction in the price of petroleum products in the country. According to the bulk oil importers, government will have settled about 240 million Ghana cities of its total debts between July and the end of December next year with the overt recoveries. The bulk oil importers say despite the payment made by government since July, the debt position is still at over 1.5 billion Ghana cities. This comprises under recoveries or subsidies and foreign exchange losses. Meanwhile, the National Petroleum Authority insists it cannot reduce prices until all the debts owed these importers are settled with the over-recoveries from the fall in the prices. Allowing stark contrast to the busy shopping atmosphere in a cross central business district just days before Christmas, traders experienced was cold what could be best what could be best be described as a shopping drought on Christmas Day. Although the traders were ready to sell their wares, the shoppers were just not ready to buy 
at best they were ready to win the shop. You will expect to see the capital city buzzing with activities on Christmas Day. Selling and buying usually appears brisker on days like these. But the situation was quite different in the central business district on Christmas Day as traders complained about low patronage of their wares. According to them, prospective customers who come to their shops leave empty-handed. Their excuse? There's no money in the system. Some sellers said they had even reduced the prices of their wares just for today as their own gifts to the buyers. All these strategies, however, proved futile and failed to fill the shops with customers. For some traders, this year's Christmas has been one of the worst in recent memory. The business is not fine. The money is not come. So some people cannot buy the thing for you. It's not because the things are expensive today? No, no, no. You have not changed your prices? No, no, no. So why are they not coming? I don't know. She said that the money. We but don't have the money to buy the thing for me. Today, market no good. Market no good. For morning, nobody came here to buy something for me. Because of the economy, economy is not good. Market is good. It's because it's Christmas, so people are not coming to town, that's why. So that I bought, I, I sold only 20 Ghana. So they have decreased my things because I want people to buy so that I can go and bring more completes in town so I can, I can come and sell. See, the market no good at all. I hear no oh yes. We don't get money what we want. I said a crowd where the this year ten and four they four selection story yet. So this year they never get no good at all, at all. They get no good at all. The prospective customers also say they would love to shop, but they have to be prudent in their spending, hence the low patronage. Oh, I want to buy some dress for my kids. But the things are very, very expensive. But by all means, I will, I will choose one for because it's Christmas. They are more expensive, but at least that's why we work. Eh? So at least, even if you cannot buy much, you buy one to please your child. You have to spend wisely because Christmas is only one day thing. So if you want to buy five, you buy two or you buy one. It's a one day celebration, so you cannot spend all you have. I'm here to buy my Christmas this thing. Sleepers and then my dress. Even when I came, I came here since in the morning and I've been going round, 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 round and asking. Because you want to buy something that yes. is super? Yes, I want to buy something that is super, at least. How? Bar bargaining wise, I think so I can. Bargaining wise? Too. Yes. So I'm looking at 15 CDs, but he says no, so I have to leave. But he's saying I should bring 25 CDs. So until you get something that is worth 15 cities, you're not yeah, fine. No. So I'm pleading with her at 15. I'm with him at 15. So if he accepts, fine. If he does not, I'll walk home. Well, interesting revelations over there. Now, Chairman of UT Holdings and his team on Christmas Day put smiles on the faces of over 2,000 less privileged persons on the streets of the capital. The gesture was also extended to inmates in some police cells, also in Accra. Apart from Christmas being a period to commemorate the birth of Jesus Christ, it is also a season when individuals, families and organizations get together to share quality time. The homeless and those in prison are often left out of the fun during the seasons. To make this Christmas a memorable one for the destitute and those incarcerated, UT Holdings decide to spend some time with these persons. According to the chairman of the group, Joseph and Sanamoa, wealth and money are meaningless if they do not benefit the less privileged in society. Today is 25th is, and is the birth of our Savior. So all of us are enjoying the birth of Jesus Christ. So I decided that why can't I get UT group to come out there so that we can go and touch other people's lives. It makes me very happy for doing something like that because it's very, very hard for other people on the privilege. As I told you, today is a joyous day for all the Christians. So why can't we make other people who are underprivileged be happy too? 
by just giving them a token for that day in particular. That's the main reason why uh, we are doing this. Okay, so would you call the... The project, which started some 12 years ago, is held annually on Christmas Eve. And Joseph Nsanomua believes spending 35,000 Ghana cities to put smiles on the faces of the beneficiaries is heartwarming. Inmates of the Accra Central Police Station were excited at the thought that, even in jail, they could still have a feel of the Christmas celebration. Latifi Dries reporting for Joy News. Now, official figures show the number of people seeking work in France has risen to a record high. The jobless total rose by 27,400 in November to 3,400 to 3,488,300, the highest level yet. Same. That means the number looking for a job has risen by 5.8% in the past year. The claimant count rose in November for the third month in a row, and official government estimates suggest the economy will have grown by just 0.5% this past year. The jobless figures count the number of people claiming benefits and looking for work with the National Agency for Unemployment, the alternative international measure of unemployment devised by the International Labour Organization says the unemployment in France rose to 2.84 million in the third quarter of the year, given an unemployment rate of 9.9 percent. President Francois Hollande, ex elected in 2012, made the creation of more jobs a key feature of his election campaign. The latest attempt included plans of increasing the number of businesses operating on Sundays and opening up regulated sectors to competition. The deregulation plan produced immediate protest by thousands of people in Paris and faces opposition from within the ruling Socialist Party. So that's all by way of business. We'll be back shortly with the international segment. Business news. Welcome back now to one of my favorites, and that sports now. Let us start with the sad news. Ghana. Captain Samuel Janis out of the race for the 2014 African Footballer of the Year Award after failing to make the final three-man shortlist. Now, CAF announced earlier today the names of the players who will be gunning for Africa's most coveted Footballer of the Year Award following votes from national team head coaches or technical directors. The award will be contested by Gabon midfielder Pierre Emerick Obe Mingan, a Nigerian goalkeeper Vincent Inyama, and Ivory midfielder Yaya Touré, who holds the title. For the African Player of the Year, uh, based in Africa, Algerian Do, Akram, Janet, and El Hedi Bellamiri are in contention with DR Congo forward Fermin Mobili in Dumbe. The winners will be unveiled at the Glow Calf Awards Gala on Thursday, January 8, 2015, in Lagos, Nigeria. Now moving on to England, where the Premiership marches on Boxing Day as league leaders Chelsea seek to tighten their grip on the EPL by looking to the win when they host fourth-placed West Ham United. It will be Chelsea's second match in a busy sequence of four games in 11 days. Manchester City will visit the Heathrow's to play West Bromwich Albion with boss Manuel Pellegrini in a bullish mood. Third-placed Manchester United are at home to Newcastle United, bottom club Leicester City. Welcome Tottenham Hotspot, while Hull City go in search of a first win since October when they travel to the Stadium of Light to face Sunderland. Elsewhere, Arsenal host KPR, Everton plays Stoke, Swansea welcome Aston Villa, and fifth-placed Southampton face Crystal Palace at Selhurst Park. 
other matches coming up on Boxing Day are Burnley hosting Liverpool and Crystal Palace versus Southampton. And that's where we draw the curtains for sports. We'll be back shortly. And do some showbiz and beleaguered hip life artist Kwa Kesi has for the second time been rushed to the Konfanochi teaching hospital after complaining of stomach ache. Parkinson was rushed to the hospital on Thursday, December 25, after he complained of stomach ache to the prison officials yesterday. Ernest Aban, the senior administrative director at the hospital's public relations unit in Kumase, confirmed this to CityFMOnline.com. According to him, Kwakese is currently with them, but under police guard. He, however, added that the rapper is responding to treatment. Also known as Abadam, he has been charged for allegedly smoking cannabis in public. Before his arrest, Kwakese was planning a Christmas party for inmates of the Pantan Hospital by end of the year. He revealed this in an exclusive interview with Showbiz on November 14 when we asked about his plans for Christmas. Christmas is coming. What's up? Charlie, we're chilling, you know. Um, and, um, my time has a lot, you know, this Christmas. Um, first, you know, we, we started dropping some videos and stuff. Um, Mr. Lover Lover, which is making a lot of noise. Um, I have a new video which is ready, um, Sue Dragon, which is going to come out maybe this weekend. And um, we're working on my album, um, the Forever album, and um, we're dropping that um, in December as well, in Christmas. Okay. So that's what is in the pipeline. We're also doing a party for the people of Pantine. You know, um, I did it before and we are doing it again this year. So we have a lot happening this Christmas, the album launch the party for Panta and you know a lot of videos and stuff. But now this seems like a shattered dream as he was refused bail for the fourth consecutive time last Tuesday by a circuit court in Kumase. Very obvious Kwakese is spending the Christmas and perhaps New Year celebrations in jail. The case has been adjourned to January 5, 2015. Hey, hey, hey. Well, there are many ways people choose to usher in the Christmas period, whereas some go to church, others choose to indulge in other activities, such as spending time at pubs. Showbiz hit the streets of Accra on Christmas Eve to find out what Accra was up to. <laughs> Ushering in the Christmas festive can be a fun-filled activity, and the fun was not missing on the streets of Accra. Street-side pubs were crowded with people enjoying drinks with loud music blasting from speakers. <laughs> Live band music also featured prominently on the night. Some revelers spoke to showbiz. will keep you posted on happenings and activities during the festive season. Well, I think I missed out. I should have gone out last night. Oh, my goodness. Now, the much anticipated concert by one of gospel music's finest do, No Try, finally came off on Christmas Eve of the charismatic evangelistic ministry at Norton Legon. The event, originally billed to come off early this month, had to be rescheduled due to technical challenges on the day. <laughs> The 
Instagram dubbed One God Live Concert featured some selected gospel icons like Sis Chun, Kwabna Kwabna, Koda, ASP Kofi Sapon, Yao Sapon and Asumafu Band and the main act No Tribe. The One God Live Concert was a platform for the release of the third album of the versatile gospel group No Tribe. It was also an opportunity for worshippers from all walks of life to meet and pour out their hearts to God through worship and praise. Performance from these renowned artists brought the audience in the auditorium to their feet as they sang and danced their hearts out. Some of the artists and patrons said they had lots of fun at the event and asked that it be made an annual affair. Meanwhile, No Tribe says the One God Life concert will also feature in other regions of the country. It has been good, it has been great. As we are dancing, praying, singing, we should make sure we make it to heaven so that our work will not be in vain. It's been very nice program. This program is supposed to be that should not be cancelled. It's not a council, it's supposed to be. Every year we have to do it. It was really up to expectation. I think they even went beyond that. So that's it for showbiz. So that's where we draw the curtains. But before we go, let's look at stories making headlines. And Christians across the capital join their colleagues around the world to mark Christmas. And police in the eastern region dismissed reports Nigerian Islamist militants. Also, uh, group Boko Haram has formed a group in one of the communities in the region. And traders in Accra Central Business District disappointed a lack of patronage of their wares in spite of discount offers available.